Hi, everybody. Welcome to Hayesville High School. As tonight, our Maroon Devils are on the road here in Smoky Mountain Conference play to take on the Yellow Jackets. And it's going to be a cool night as the weather has changed dramatically. As you can kind of see in the backgrounds here on the mountains of Clay County, there's a stiff breeze. And, and Toby, uh, temperatures are feeling like fall. And I guess it is uh, of uh, actually autumn. So, uh, But the weather has taken a, a nosedive. And we hope our football team keeps up the hot play that we saw last Saturday against Pikeville. Well, we'll see if the cold weather brings some more hot play for from the Maroon Devils, who, you know, last week we were uh, just on fire in the ground game, running the football extremely efficiently, and uh, they'll look to keep that in uh, in play tonight. You know, one of the key things tonight, of course, Gary, is to keep that yellow jacket uh, wishbone attack on the sidelines, make them play defense as long as they can, and not get those sustained long drives going. And that's right, because if they have the football, that means uh, we're not going to be able to score in most cases. So hopefully the Maroon Devil defense will step up, and I believe it will after pitching a shutout last week and having that great effort against Robbinsville in our uh, other conference game uh, coming into this one here tonight. But uh, uh, this team, I think, uh, is looking at some really good things for Maroon Devil football with uh, this being one of our next-to-last road games, and then we have three of our last four at home. So, hey, if we can win tonight, things are looking better as the rest of the schedule shows up. Well, you're exactly correct, and you know, this uh, particular Maroon Devil team does it the way uh, it's been done in the past at Swain with strong line play. Uh, they basically dominated Pikeville up front last week, and that was sort of the difference in the Robbinsville game as well. And it'll be a difference again here tonight if the Maroon Devils come out on top as to how well their offense and defensive line get after the Hayesville attack. No question about it. Our Maroon Devils, of course, loaded with seniors, while Hayesville a little bit younger. Nine seniors, I think 14 sophomores on this Yellow Jacket team. But they are getting better, as you mentioned, with this option offense. So our defensive ends, our linebackers, people like Corbin Panther, for example, could have a huge game tonight against the Hayesville Yellow Jacket offense. Well, they're going to have to. You know, it's a... It's basically a gap control type style. you got to play against that. One man has responsibility for a dive. One man has the quarterback. One man has the pitch. And any of those break down, it can be a big gain. And that's the whole precept behind the option offense, the wishbone. They want to put pressure on you to make those plays. And it's going to be a fun game to watch here tonight. The Maroon Devils and the Hayesville Yellow Jackets. Kickoff coming up next right here on cable television. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Maroon Devil Football here on cable television as our Maroon Devils are ready to kick it off to the Hayesville Yellow Jackets as Evan Sneed boots it high and boots it deep back to the 10-yard line. On the return for the Yellow Jackets is going to be Dylan Williams, and he brings it out across the 25-yard line. Nice return before he runs into big Lee Patilla and Steve Moon. Anytime you run into Lee Patilla, that's usually all she wrote. He'll knock you to the ground. Well, that's what he did that time. He <laughs> took him to the ground. And uh, I tell you what, uh, Steve, it's good to be back uh, uh, on the air, both on radio and on cable television and uh, I think on the Internet as well. So we have uh, all kinds of media opportunities here tonight. That's a good That's a good thing. That's right. Spread the word about Maroon Devil Sports. And here we go. Hayesville coming out of there. Uh, they like to run this triple option. they got a man in motion. Quarterback is going to keep it. Turns the corner out across the 30. And, hey, there to meet him in a not-so-friendly way is big Jacob Wildcat along with Drew Husky. And they weren't too friendly on that play. Not too much. They took him <laughs> to the ground also. Ball was on the 27. They took it up to about the 31. They bring up second down in about uh, about six. I tell you, Steve, uh, as we were talking in the pregame with Toby Burrell, uh, the weather has made a dramatic change. It's very windy, it's very cloudy, and it's also very cool here at Hayesville tonight. It is cool. Jacket weather. That's right. Break out the jackets. Speaking of jackets, yellow jackets, hand off going straight ahead, and that's not a good place to go when you're running into Mr. Peyton Parker, the junior. Stop that play, Cole. That's going to bring up third down. Peyton Parker along with number eight, Jared Turbyfield. Good defense for Swain County. Big play coming up right now to start the ball game. Third down in about six. And you know, Steve, talking about defense last week, our Maroon Devils pitching a shutout against Pikeville, Kentucky. So uh, I think this team is just getting better each week this season. I like it. I like it a lot. Yes, it is looking good. Okay, got a man in the backfield. Got a receiver on the left side. Got a man almost in the uh, slot on the right side. Back to throw. The quarterback airs it out, and it's going to be almost intercepted at the 45-yard line. And, yes, it is going to be intercepted. There's Carl Judaleska to call the play, the man in black and white. And a big pick for the Maroon Devil defense. That was Cody Rich, wasn't it? I believe it was. Number five, Cody Rich. He came up, and it looked for a moment like it was going to be on the ground, but they say he got his arms under it. That is a 
a big pick, as you want to call it that, at the 45-yard line. And, hey, it's our ball, Steve, first That's and right. ten. First and ten, Swing County from their own 45-yard line. We no scores are still earning this ball game. Our first shot at the football. We line them up in the I formation after the big defensive play by number five, Cody Rich. Now we switch. Got a man over on the wing on the right side. In the backfield is the guy who gets the football, and that's the man who runs crazy, and here he goes again. Uh Uh-oh, we got a penalty flag. Uh Jose down the sideline, but it's going to come back, Steve, I'm afraid. Took it down to about the 15-yard line before he finally knocked out of bounds. But as Gary said, there was laundry on the field, and that one's probably going to come back. (laughs) And it's not a Pittsburgh Steeler terrible towel either. No, but it's uh, yellow. (laughs) It's yellow. (laughs) And, you know, Steve, if there's been one – thing that has hurt us this year besides sometimes our own mistakes as every team does it's penalties we've had our share of them we we really need to work on that yep and every team makes mistakes ours does too but uh, so far this year i will say this the other teams have made more mistakes than we have yeah we're what four and one that's right only one loss on the season and this penalty is going to move us back now on the holding call to about the 36-yard line. So we're going to lose not only about nine yards on the penalty, but about 50 yards after that great run by Josue Otero. This is just Swain County's second conference game in the Smoke Mountain Conference. We took care of business at Robbinsville a couple weeks ago. Here comes Josue to the left side. He has more room out there, Steve. Out to the 50 in the Hazel territory. 45-40. Nice cut, finally dragged down on a touchdown-saving tackle over there by Robert Lund, one of their seniors on defense. Well, that second effort, I mean, he rolled out around the left side, and he saw some daylight, and he ran for it and cut back and made a couple of tacklers miss, and that was a good gainer by Josue Otero. I tell you, the guy is, uh, he, he just amazes me. He's 5'6", 150 pounds, but he is one tough player. He is, isn't he? He is tough. Not afraid to run into the biggest guy on the field. Doesn't matter to him. He'll that, do it. That's right. Here comes Colby Hyde handing off right side. Big hole this time. And it's going to be big 44. Austin Schuler running for a Maroon Devil first down inside the 30-yard line. Good run by Austin Schuler, number 44. That's Vaughn Schuler's grandson, if anybody's wondering. See, I might have been a little early on that call. No, there they go. Now they finally moved the sticks. I thought they were going to disagree, but the officials finally saw it our way, and there's a first and ten. But but I tell you, Vaughn is at every game. Saw him over at Robbinsville, and he's he's out there watching, watching his grandson. First and ten. Colby, hands off. Hoseway, round the left side. Oh. Tackled ball, ball is loose. loose. Picked up, but I think the uh, ground caused the fumble, Steve, so it's going to be blown dead at the 23-yard line, we'll say. Austin Shooter picked that loose football up, and he was going to score a touchdown, <laughs> but uh, it was blown dead. Yeah, and I tell you what, that's the thing to do, though. Don't stop till the whistle blows, right? Yeah, but the whistle blew. And... <laughs> the whistle blew. Here we go. Nine minutes to play first quarter. We'll call it a second down at about three from the Hayesville 23-yard line from the eye. Josue, the deep man, gets the handoff. Big hole on the right side. Josue inside the 20, down to the 15, lowers his head, spins all the way down to the 11. Talk about second effort, Steve. That's a lot of that. Yards after contact. And that's a lot of that. He spun around and dodged a couple of would-be tacklers and made a real good gain out of that. Is that what you call a yak? Yeah. Yards after contact. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's a Steve Moon original, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Could very well be. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Josue and Austin lining up side by side. Now we've got a man in motion. That's going to be Lee Patillo behind Colby Height. Handoff goes to the right side and down inside the five-yard line goes the power back, Austin Schuler, and he's a big boy at 5'11", 205. Looks like he made it to about the three. Very close to a first down, Steve. We'll see where they spot it, but very, very close. Uh oh. Got a face mask against the Yellow Jackets, so that penalty is a little closer. Probably going to give us a first down here. Depending on where they spot it, that's usually half the distance, and the chains didn't move, but I'm pretty sure that's going to make it first down and go from the three yard line for the Maroon Devils, Steve. So we get a little bit of penalty yardage back there. That penalty might have been from the spot of the foul, you think? I think you're right. This time, Kobe Hyatt lining us up. 8.25 to play, first quarter. Same set, 
This time Lee goes to the left side now, back to the right side. That means we're probably going to run left, and there we go. Hosewell in into the end zone, standing up, Steve. Nobody got a hand on it. No, a touchdown, Josue Otero. Swain County jumped on top six to nothing early in this football game. Conference game at Hazel, North Carolina. The Swain County Maroon Devils and the Hazelville Yellow Jackets. You know, I was talking to some uh, friends here in Hayesville who went over and scouted the uh, Swain-Franklin game, and, and they uh, were talking to me, and they said, you guys have a really good football team because also Franklin is very good as well. Yeah, Franklin's good. We, we can testify to that. Uh, two good teams that night over at the Panther Pit. Now Evan Sneed is going to line up for the point after touchdown. Matt Manley is going to hold. And let's see if we can make it. A 7 nothing ball game. High snap, gets it down, boots it through, and it's going to be 7 nothing. 8.15 to play in the first quarter under cloudy skies from Hayesville. And Steve, the Maroon Devils draw first blood. We lead 7 nothing. We'll be back with more Maroon Devil football after this timeout. Fans, welcome back as Evan Sneed will kick it off again for the second time here early in the first quarter. From the return 15-yard line and out across the 25 to about the 29-yard line. Again, it's going to be uh, the Hayesville return man. This time it's going to be on the return. Looks like uh, Robert Lund, and it's going to be Hayesville's ball again, Steve. So, again, very young team here for Hayesville. Looking at some of their stats, 14 sophomores, 8 seniors, nine juniors but they have both their quarterbacks back a couple of their best linemen back uh, a couple of their wide receivers back so they do have some good skill players but again uh, some of their spots are pretty young yes they are they're rebuilding right now Drew Meanwhile, husky number 31 on the stop at time for swing county but uh, he's all over the field this time around the left side option and there's a oh, wow. ball again and i believe the maroon devils have it matt manley was all over the play let's see if he came up with the loose football he did he was down there also around the ball as Jared Turbyfield. I'm not sure who got it, but it's Swain High football, first and ten. I think it was Matt Manley recovered. I don't know who delivered that lick. I mean, they knocked a snot out of that young man. Yep. That was a tough That was a tough shot, and that ball popped out of there on the uh, option play. So, uh, again, and we're going to have a, it looks like a timeout called by Hayesville here on the first quarter with 8.02 to play. It's Swain 7, Hayesville 0. We'll be back after this timeout. Fans, welcome back as the Maroon Devils now have it a first down and 10. After the second turnover by Hayesville, dropping back to throw, Cole Bahat looking in the end zone. Pass is going to be complete to Matt Manley. Oh, yeah. Big touchdown pass, Steve, in the end zone for the Swain High Maroon Devils. Swain, Matt had double coverage on him, and, and Colby Hot looked like this threaded the needle and hit him in stride. Touchdown, Swain County and Matthew Manley. So on the first play from scrimmage after the uh, Hayesville fumble, Manley opened in the end zone, had just a step on his double coverage back there. And now for the point after touchdown, it's going to be Evan Sneed, who has been busy. He's already kicked one extra point and kicked off twice. So Sneed, a busy guy, and another busy guy, Matt Manley. He just caught that touchdown pass, and now he's going to have to have good hands here on the hold. See if we can make it a 14-0 ball game with 7.55 to play. The kick is up, and the kick looks good from this angle, and it is Swain 14, Hayesville 0. We're off and running here, and Smoky Mountain Conference play will be right back. Fans, welcome back. It's early, and Maroon Devils are rocking and rolling here. Evan Sneed will kick it off again, and it's going to be angling toward the right side, taking at the 11-yard line. Back come the Hayesville Yellow Jackets. On the return is Dylan Williams. Back out across the 16-yard line, and that's where he's going to be tangled up down there by Sean Webb and company. Steve, also on the tackle down there was uh, Robert Duplac. That was uh, uh, Husky, Drew Husky. And he made a good tackle as well. He kind of made a shoestring tackle. He went all, laid his body out and brought that guy down by his shoestrings. So yeah. now the uh, Maroon Devils again... Uh, Playing just about flawless football here early, Steve. Yeah, too quick early touchdown for Swain County. They lead Hazel 14 to nothing, halfway through, not halfway through the first quarter. And uh, both set up by turnovers. Hayesville fumble and an interception. Now the toss to the left side. Hayesville cutting the corner, has a first down out across the 30 yard line. Good run over there by the Hayesville Yellow Jackets. Their best run of the ball game. And that's going to be a first down for uh, James. Uh, uh, Flatus, a 5'4", 150-pound senior. He's built much like Josue Otero, short but tough, and they get it done. Cecil Shepard and Drew Husky on the stop for Swain County. I'll tell you, those, uh, those guys get around the football. Yes, they do. 
And in this against this triple option kind of offense that Hayesville runs, you've got to have guys play assignment football and play their gaps. And this time they're going to fake the handoff. Quarterback's going to keep it, and he's in trouble. And he's going to be wrapped up on the play. In there in a hurry is Lee Patillo on the tackle for a sack. That was a sack by Lee Patillo. He dropped him for a loss. Bring up third down in, in how much? Oh, about 12. Big play right now. If Hazel was going to compete in this football game, they need to convert this. They need to hang on to the football. They can't go three and out. That's almost as bad as a fumble. They did that twice. Yep. Now, is the sack the same thing, same thing as a yak? No. <laughs> no. no. Okay, just wanted to check. <laughs> Here we go. All right, fans. Second down and 12. Man in motion for the Yellow Jackets. Whistle blows, and we've got a penalty flag. Either there was some motion or an offside. Let's see. Illegal motion is a call against uh, Hayesville. So they're going to back up five. And a lot of times you see when they have this triple option, those wingmen over there on the left and right sometimes go in motion. So sometimes I'm sure it's hard for the official to, to call it as an illegal motion, or are they legal when they go in motion kind of around the side, if you will? Gosh. That's tough. That's tough. Speaking of wings, we stopped at the family restaurant, and Joe Benny had wings for supper. Hey, I hope he bought you some, too. He did. He bought me a barbecue sandwich. Uh-oh, here's another big play by the defense coming in. It's going to be Drew Husky, and he's got a sack as he hit the quarterback from behind. He didn't see him coming, and also right in his face in there was Peyton Parker also. And number 11, Lee Patillo. Lee Patillo came out of there with the football in his hands, but it was all for naught. It had already been blown dead. So, uh. So Joe Benny had wings, and you had a barbecue sandwich, huh? Yeah. That's not a bad night. Yeah, not bad at all. I mean, he paid for it. I mean, I, uh-huh. I like going places with him. Yeah, that makes it taste better, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> when somebody else pays for it, it tastes better. Yeah. <laughs> He's a very generous man. Yes, indeed. Here comes Hayesville again. Option play, and again, the quarterback is sacked in the backfield. Coming in there, another big play. And this time in on the sack, I couldn't tell, but I think it was Jared Turbyfield. Yeah, that's right, Jared Turbyfield, number eight for Swain County. And now, Steve, we keep pushing Hayesville back, and they're going to have to punt on fourth down. And let's see, 20, uh, right at 30 yards to go. Fourth down and almost 30 to go. The Hayesville punter is literally standing at the goal line. Hayesville going in the wrong direction. That's it. You can't, you can't back up. And now back deep, of course, is our Matt Manley, and he's going to be inside Hayesville territory unless this guy just kicks it way down the field. Not a bad punt. Matt back to the 47-yard line. Gets by one man, 45-40, 35-30, down the sideline. Look out, 20-15-10, oh down to the five, and it's the second touchdown of the night already for Matthew Manley. Matt Manley runs back the punt. That's a third touchdown already for Swain County in this young football game. And so far, Hazel has been simply overmatched by our Maroon Devils. You're right. Five minutes left to play here in the first quarter, Steve, and it's already 20 to nothing here. Here on a cool Friday night at Hayesville High School. Evan Sneed, again, has been a busy guy. He has two extra points looking for number three. Nice crowd on hand here from Hayesville and from Swain High. And as you mentioned, Steve, it's a good night to have a jacket. Yeah. Very windy. PAT is up, and Evan has it looking good. So with 5.05 to play, we're still in the first quarter. It's Swain 21, Hayesville 0. We'll be back in just a moment. Fans, welcome back. Evan Sneed ready to kick it off for the Maroon Devils here at Hayesville High School. Gary Ayers along with Steve Moon. And let's see what we can do now. The defense has really set the tone along with some good special teams play as well. Sneed kick is going to chase their man all the way back to the five-yard line. Bringing it back out near the 10. It's going to be Dylan Williams. About and he's going to be stopped Yeah, inside uh, the 20, Steve. So when you can hold their guys inside the 20, it's a good job. A good, good coverage by Swing County. First and 10, Hazel from the 14-yard line. And, you know, one of the first guys down there, of course, we know as fast, is Josue Otero. He's quick as lightning. <laughs> he was down there on the kickoff team and was helping out on the tackle. The kicker turned for Hazel and fielded the ball and then dropped it. And so he had to wait and pick it, pick it back up before he could run with it. Kind of delayed his, his starting time. 
Oh, no question about that. Just under five minutes left to play. We're in the first quarter. Still early. And the Yellow Jackets again running the option and running out near the 20-yard line. But uh, not enough. Again, Jacob Wildcat, among other guys, chasing him down over there, Steve. As again, our defense is is, uh, is really stepping up. Number 31, Drew Husky on the stop for Swain County. He's playing a heck of a ball game so far. Coming into conference play tonight. Looking at the standings, Hayesville 4-2 and two overall, 1-1 one and one in conference play. Hayesville comes out again in that triple option, kind of got wings on each side. Now we got a man in motion, and the quarterback hands off, and they kind of run over the B-gap, if you will, and over there on the carry is going to be Caleb Knuckles. But, uh, Caleb Hayes, Knuckles. That's a local Clay County name, Knuckles. He played JVs for Swing County last year. Yes, he did. He was excellent, an excellent athlete. His father was the principal at Swing County High School. That's right. But he has since transferred over to Hayesville. Yep. We wish him all the best. But they're fine, excellent, wonderful people. Except we, tonight. Except tonight. <laughs> we miss them in Swing County. They're great people. No, they really are. They are good folks. And yeah, we do wish them well. Pass is going to be complete over on the uh, sideline at the 30, at the 35-yard line. Good job. Matt Manley forcing him out of bounds over there. Austin Moss on the catch for the Yellow Jackets. And that's their second first down of the night here, I believe, Steve. So they haven't had much success offensively, but they moved the chains out to the 35. That was a nifty little pass completion out on the right flat for a first down for Hayesville. And you know, Steve, looking at our standings, talking about those a moment ago, we've only played one conference game, Hayesville 1-1. One and one. Murphy is 2-0, and oh, so only two conference teams still undefeated, Murphy and Swain, this early in the season. This time the quarterback trying to gain some yards, gets out across the 39-yard line before he's finally upended down there. Again, Peyton Parker coming over there, and also to help on defense is going to be Austin Curtis. Number 60, Peyton Parker was the main man on that stop. And number 20, Austin Curtis. Don't forget now, coming up in JV football this Thursday, our Maroon Devil JV is playing their final game of the regular season on the road at Murphy at 6 p.m. So we hope at you'll Murphy. get over there. Yeah, at Murphy. Do you know what their record is this year? No, I don't, Steve, to be honest with you. Unfortunately, I've not been able to follow the JV team this year, so I don't know either. You're, I know uh, – I know they've lost at least one. Uh-oh, here's a bad drop. toss of the backfield, and Hayesville gets on it, avoiding what could have been a third turnover here in the first quarter now with 215 or 245 to play in the first quarter. Quarterback tried to pitch it out to the right, but the pitch was about three yards too short and it hit the ground before it got to the running backs, and Swain was all over them. Yeah, Jared Turbyfield and Lee Patilla over there to really disrupt that play. And, and again, two turnovers already have led directly to Maroon Devil touchdowns in this 21 nothing ball game. So Swing, again, County, Swing hey, County has all the momentum going for them right now. Oh, no question. Hayesville has got to protect the football. This time, receivers left and right. Again, got some wings in there. Got people moving. No penalty flag. Got though, him. The quarterback sacked. is in trouble, and he's going to be sacked on the play. And there's uh, one of our cats, Corbin, Corbin Panther. Panther. The big man, Corbin Panther, in the middle. He come right in there right all, all over the quarterback before he could even hand it off. And you know, we said before the game, Steve, that in a game like this against a triple option offense, a player like Corbin Panther could really have a huge night. Yeah. (laughs) And he's had some big nights this year. He certainly has. Tremendous athlete, tremendous football player, tremendous person, Corbin Panther. Matt Danielson on to punt now for the uh, Hayesville Yellow Jackets in their gold pants, black jerseys, gold helmets now, with a minute and a half to play in the first quarter. Matt Manley back, and they punt it away from him. No return this time. Matter of fact, just caught over there on the sideline by one of our assistant coaches. So uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure who that was over there, but they made a pretty good catch it was on the pretty sideline. Good. It was a pretty good catch. <laughs> Unfortunately, we, he couldn't run it back, so it'll be uh, spotted at the 49-yard line for uh, our Maroon Devil offense here, Steve. And so far, we uh, – Might have been Tommy been. Deals, you reckon? It might have been. He's a baseball player, so he, he kind of feels it <laughs> yeah. like a high fly. He's pretty athletic, though. Yeah, he is. He s- certainly is. So here we go. Kobe Hyatt lining him up, split backs, turns and tosses. Jose left side, gets a block, pops outside, 40, and oh. is dragged down from behind at the 37-yard line by Hayesville's Zach Wall. Good game by Jose, and a shoestring tackle by the Hayesville defender. 
And I tell you, to, to get hose away from behind is pretty good. Yeah. Had, had, had kind of an angle on him <laughs> yeah. coming from left to right. And Hostway was cutting it upfield, and they, he got him, but not until he gained the first down yardage. One twelve to play, first quarter, 21 nothing. Maroon Devil lead. That's going to bring up first and 10. From the, from the Hazel 37-yard line. And the Yellow Jacket territory here. Again, split backs. Got double tight ends. As Colby Hines going to run it himself. No, he handed off. A good fake over there as he handed off to uh, Austin Schuler. Both of them had holes that you and I could they run did. through, and that's a first down. You could have drove a truck through the one of those holes. And I tell you, a offensive, small truck. Offensive line doing a good job. And up front there, Steve, we don't talk about these guys much, but people like Will Ferguson, Tyler Cook, Drew Cook, Corbin Panther, Jacob Wildcat, those offensive linemen are good. That's where it all gets started at, right there on the offensive line. Yep. Because if they don't do their job, those running backs are going to have a long night. They'll be hurting, won't they? That's right. First down and 10, just inside the 25. Colby Hyde again running the option, and he does keep it this time. He's headed to the end zone, down to the five, and he's in. Maroon Devil touchdown, and this time Colby did keep it, and that's a good decision as he scored from about 25 yards away. That was an excellent decision. He he kept he see the he saw the hole open up, and he kept it himself, and Broke down the right side and in the end zone for a touchdown for Colby Hyatt. And see, that's that senior experience that uh, that you get. You got to know when to keep it. As Kenny Rogers used to say, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Yeah. You got to know when to keep it and know when to toss it. Don't count your money when you're still playing ball. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's not over till all the all the cards have been played. Evan Sneed now for the point after. Matt Manley will hold. Low snap, but he gets it down. The kick is up, and it looks good from here, and it is good. So we still have 28 seconds to play in the first quarter, and Amaroon Devils are running wild here tonight in Hayesville. It's a 28-0 lead. We'll be back after this timeout. Fans, welcome back. 28 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Gary Ayers along with Steve Moon. Glad to be with you on Friday night. There's no other place I'd rather be on a Friday night. Evan Sneed to kick it off. Again, good kick from Evan. He has had a busy night. Taking oh, up the 15 it. and dropped. And it's going to be picked we up got by the it. Devils. Down there on the football is going to be Austin Curtis. Curtis. Austin Curtis, number 20, hustling all the way. The hateful man just, just muffed it. It went right through his hands. Yep. And I, I wonder, Steve, I, it almost looked like the Hayesville player kind of, I don't know if he got his uh, uh, sight messed up on the lights or something because it looked like he just lost that ball for a second. I think it hit him in the knee. And it uh, took a bad bounce on him, and this is a bad place to fumble inside your own 25-yard line. So already trailing 28 to nothing. Hazel still in the first quarter. And now in the shotgun. Haven't seen this much tonight from Colby Hyatt in the shotgun. Takes the snap, turns, and he's going to keep it going straight up the middle down to the 15 and spins his way down to the 10, down to the 5, and he's in again. Second touchdown in a row on two plays by Colby wow. Hyatt. Wow. Colby Hyatt took it in the end zone. It's going to be what? If he kick extra point, it'd be 35 to nothing in the first quarter. Can you believe that? I'll tell you it again, and I hate to keep beating this dead horse, but turnovers are killing Hayesville. Third turnover that has led directly to Maroon Devil touchdowns. That's right. They haven't got a break all night. Not a break tonight for Hayesville, and you can't turn the ball over against a good football team. No. Because they will make you pay. <laughs> they will, and Swain has really made Hayesville pay. pay. They've got their nose bleeding to death right now. Got a timeout on the field now. Got a Hayesville uh, uh, equipment repair as one of the players comes off here. But, uh, Steve, next week we're going to be at home. Thank goodness. Uh, Next Friday, we host Cherokee. We get two in a row at home hosting Cherokee next Friday. And then Andrews the Friday after that. We won't know how to act. Which one of those will be homecoming? Uh, you got me there. The second one, Joe tells us. Joe Holt is on the spot. October 14, Andrews homecoming. I look forward to that. Here's the point after by Evan. And it's going to be good. And, uh, folks, 16 seconds to play in the first quarter. It's Swain, 35. Hayesville, nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. Fans, we're back. Evan Sneed, the busiest man in the stadium, but he's going to have to wait a minute here, Steve, because the football blew off the tee, and he's going to have to tee it up again. Has to start over. <laughs> so now he tees it up. But the wind is is really fierce out there tonight. It's been uh, blowing all afternoon, as you probably know. And it's chilly. It is cool. 
And it's a good night to be in the press box. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> Evan Sneed now will try to kick it again, and he does. He boots a line drive. It's going to be taken back at the seven-yard line. Hayesville on the return. Back out across is going to be uh, Jaquise Lloyd. Number 27 brings it out. Good return by Hayesville. And then he's brought down by Drew Husky and a bunch of Maroon Devils. Yeah, a bunch of them, but Drew Husky led the pack. He has, he has made the tackle, I think, on every kickoff Swain County has made so far tonight. Yeah, Bradley Green down there to help him out. But, uh, again, it's been a tough start here for the Yellow Jackets. Again, three turnovers for Hayesville has really, really hurt the Yellow Jackets under uh, head coach Gary Miller and their staff, Kenneth Dockery, Smith Danielson, John Hensley, Nick Rumfeld, and Jeff Vardo. And now on first down. Hayesville on the ground, but again, a bunch of jerseys around the tackle. Peyton Parker among those, Steve. And Corbin Panther, 60 and 61. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter here. It's been uh, it's been a nightmare if you're a Hayesville Yellow Jacket. Our score, Swain 35, Hayesville nothing. We'll be back to start the second quarter after this timeout. Fans, welcome back here on a Friday night. Gary Ears along with Steve Moon, cameraman Joe Holt on the scene here at Hayesville High School. Second down and eight for the Yellow Jackets. The quarterback in trouble, and he is running for his life, and Corbin Panther is after him. He turns the corner, and there on the Ooh. tackle is going to be Austin Curtis. Also coming over from the side is Corbin Panther, and that one hurt. Uh, he, he, Corbin Panther ran him down from the backside, and he made it hurt when that young man hit the, young man hit the ground. He'll have to catch his breath. Because he knocked it out of him. Yeah, Austin Curtis kind of hit him low, and then Corbin hit him from behind. And the quarterback, Zach Wall, six foot, 170-pound junior. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to feel that one tomorrow morning. Ball up to the 34-yard line. But you know, Steve, as they say, you're not a football player if you don't hurt on Saturday morning. <laughs> you know I mean, really? Yeah. yeah. If you're playing football the way it should be on Friday night, you're going to feel it on Saturday morning. Up the gut, here comes Hayesville on the run. Caleb Knuckles spinning, and that's uh, another first down for Hayesville. And talking about the yardage just a moment ago, our Maroon Devils had 111 yards rushing. Hayesville had zero, but they changed that on that play. That's a first down for Mr. Knuckles. That was a good run, but uh, Knuckles, what's his first name? He is uh, Caleb, his sophomore. Caleb. But Caleb right. Knuckles. He is Principal Knuckles' son and was a freshman last year at Swain High. And a star on our JV team. He's a good kid, a good player. And they're good folks. You're right. Good, good folks. First down and 10. Got a man in motion. Hand off again. Coming straight ahead. But, boy, combining on the tackle, C.J. Shepard. And he led the charge and uh, might have got a yard on that for Hayesville. Lee Patilla also in on the stop for Swain County. These guys... Uh, they really have their motor running tonight on defense. And we, you know, we kind of thought, hey, it may be a short week. We had to play last Saturday. But uh, I don't see any letdown. None at all. None at all. Second down and nine. Yellow Jackets again. Triple option. Wings on each side. Quarterback dropping. Straight drop. Fires. Left side. Down the sideline. It's going to be incomplete. Down there on the incomplete. coverage. Austin Curtis doing a good job. Yeah, he was all over that, man. He threw it deep on the left side next to the sideline. and Incomplete, but Austin Curtis had good coverage. Ten minutes, ten seconds to play here in the uh, second quarter of a Friday night. But, again, after tonight, we have four games left, fans. Three of four are at home. Cherokee and Andrews at home. Then October 21st, we go to Rosman. Then the final game, final Friday in October, we host the Murphy Bulldogs. Woo-wee. That'll be fun. Here comes the quarterback on the keeper, and he's in trouble. And again, coming up on the tackle is going to be Richard Dixon and Corbin Panther. And Jacob Wildcat, number 75. You don't run into those guys uh, you very run, well. They're you don't too run big. over them, do you? No, they're too big. I mean, you got Panther there, who is uh, 6 feet, 225. Then you got Wildcat, who is 6'4", 260. And Dixon is 5'6", 230. Healthy young men. Big, strong guys. Fourth down now. Yellow Jackets need to punt. 9.38 to play here in the second quarter. Good snap. Punter gets it away. Angling it high, but not real deep. There will be no return. Ball takes a Hayesville roll. Goes sideways at the 40-yard line, and that's where it's going to be blown dead. So the Maroon Devils in good field position to get the football back. First and 10. And Steve, on offense, we haven't been stopped so far tonight. 
you know, we scored every t- every time we've had the football, and uh, it's 35 to nothing. Swain County on top of Hayesville, just starting the second quarter. If we did that in every quarter, we'll wind up beating them 140 to nothing. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope that doesn't happen. No. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. This time, Maroon Devils are going to run with a different set. Three receivers to the right side. Colby Hyatt and the shotgun. We haven't thrown a whole lot tonight, but he's going to try to throw it. Dropping back, looking down the left sideline. Manley is there, and that may be an he offensive pass he interference. He has caught it. And uh, Brian Martin back there on the coverage. But I think... I might have seen some interference up there. Now is it on offense or defense? Matt caught the ball and took it down to the five-yard line. But there's laundry again on the field. Oh, yeah. Going to have some interference here. It looked like it might be against uh, Hayesville. All the Swain's players coming down the field. Yep. There was pushing. You know, I looked while the ball was in the air. There was pushing both ways, and it is going to be on the defense, though. On the defense against uh, Hayesville. So first and goal for Swain County around the five-yard line. So, big, that's a huge penalty, Steve. That is a huge penalty. Line of scrimmage was back in uh, Maroon Devil territory, but now it's first and goal at the Hayesville 6 after that interference call. Do you call off the dogs in the first half? Uh, We'll see, but I would say yes. Absolutely. Uh, I think you do. In the spirit of good sportsmanship with uh, your conference Brothers, uh, yes, I would I would say yes. Handoff right side. We stay on the ground, and that looked like Austin, Austin Schuler Austin on the carry. Schuler, number 44, Austin Schuler. Short gain on the play, maybe a yard. But yeah. uh, high school football runs in cycles. I mean, we're it on does. top of Hazel right now, but there'll come a time when it might be the other way around. That's right. So we need to treat them like gentlemen. That's right. Be courteous and polite and nice. Because it will come back to you. It will. That old saying, what goes around comes around. And you don't, uh, you don't, you know, kick people when they're down, so no to speak. No way. Hand off right side and diving into the end zone. It's going to be a Maroon Devil touchdown for Austin Schuler. He had uh, people on his back, but he dove it in. And with 8.24 to play in the second quarter now, it's 41 nothing. Maroon Devils on top. But yeah, when it gets to this point, Steve, uh, and I know there's that, you know, coaching theory, well, we've got to keep our first team guys sharp. We've got to keep them sharp. Right. Got to give them playing time. But uh, to a point, I can only right. go with that to a point. I right. think when it's 42 nothing like it probably will be in a moment, then, yeah, you call off the dogs. Yep. But, uh, again, that's a coaching call, and that's why I'm up here. I don't know enough <laughs> to be a coach. Got a new kicker in now coming in to kick. There's a new twist. Uh, that looks like uh, Colin Petty. He comes on to kick the PAT, oh, and it's going to be low. It's going to be hitting somebody in the back. And so it's going to stay 41 nothing. Swain High on top of Hayesville with 8.24 to play. Fans, stay with us. It's been a lot of offense in the first half. We'll be back after this timeout. Fans, here we go back as... Coming on to kick off is going to be Evan Sneed now with 8.24 to play. And, Steve, there's still a lot of time left here in the first half. Swain County on top of Hayesville, 41 to 0. Here comes Evan Sneed with the kickoff. He kicks it down toward the right corner. This one going not only in the corner, but out of the end zone. No return for the Yellow Jackets. They'll have it first and 10 at the 20 yard line on the touchback. But uh, I really think, Steve, that we're going to see some. Some new players out there real soon for Swain County High School. I think so, too. Maybe on this series of downs. I, th- I think so. I mean, there's, you know, everybody has a theory, and it's kind of like noses. Everybody has an opinion and a theory, and and uh, and uh, and some people say, well, no, you go full board to halftime. Well, I don't know. Uh, and, again, it's just my opinion when you get to a certain point, hey, Give some other guys time to play. That's right. They practice hard, too. That's right. Handoff straight ahead. No, that's going to be the quarterback keeping it. Toss out to the right side. Good defensive coverage over there by Cody Rich, though. Helping him out is Drew Husky. That was a, that was a good fake by the quarterback. He faked me out. Of course, I'm a little slow. <laughs> so. <laughs> it was a good decision, but he may gain a few yards. Gained about almost five. Yeah. Good call by the quarterback, Zach Wall, their quarterback. We'll call it second and six from 24. But, you know, that's the sign of a good option quarterback, Steve, when they can fake somebody out. Uh, he, he, a pretty good slide of hand that time by the 
hateful quarterback. He certainly did, and that's, uh, again, and this triple option, it's all about sometimes uh, uh, fakes and motion and making the defense miss. This time, I think the quarterback might have hung on to it this time, but he didn't get far out to the 28-yard line. So, uh, no, check that. That's going to be actually Brack Martin, one of their seniors. And he carries out uh, for a couple of yards. Third down and still about three for Hayesville. Big play once again. See if Hayesville can convert this third down play. Got to keep the chains moving here and keep your uh, – I think Hayesville right now just needs to have a good – drive to kind of give their offense a little confidence if you will and and make them feel better got a man in motion quarterback is going to run the option again has the first down up the middle and then some 40 45 50 out across the 50 yard line and steve that's that's a new quarterback of the ball game that is brack martin number nine who has carried now for two consecutive plays and that is their biggest play of the night that was a good gainer by brack martin i mean he cut it upfield and had room to run and uh Big gainer, first and 10, Hayesville. That was about a 25-yard play out to the Maroon Devil 46-yard line, first and 10. And again, he is the new quarterback of the ballgame now. Brack Martin, he is a senior. Zach Wall, who started as a junior, so they, uh, as we were talking about earlier, two experienced quarterbacks back in this triple option offense. First down and 10. Martin hands off to the first man through this time, but he runs into a pile of folks. Richard Dixon. And they're in the middle of that pile and a bunch of Maroon Devils. Not much going on there. Just a lot of tackling and stopping. That's right. And we do have one new guy in from what we can see, uh, uh, Lewis Saley. He plays a lot. Yep, number 47. We got second and eight for Hayesville. So we're starting to see a player or two trickle in, if you will. Also, uh, Hayden Nadu is in there, number 56. So we are seeing some. Some fresh faces in there, Steve, and that's, that's, good. Uh, that's, that's good to see. Yeah, that's good. As, as you mentioned, and it's so true, these guys, they have to practice every week. Got a Hayesville helmet they're working on on the field, and I may have to call an official timeout and get that chin strap fixed. You know that one time we played uh, that team out of Tennessee that was so good, they dressed out like 108 players? Oh, yeah, Morristown West. And they, they had that's too much for us. They beat us soundly. But in the second half, they, I think they just ran the clock and did not stop it for no reason to get the game over with. Yep. And then we uh, got a little revenge when they came to Swain. We uh, beat them that year, 2004. That's right. That's right. We shocked Morristown West. That's who it was. Yep. Morristown West. Hand off left side. Uh-oh. I tell you, uh, between the tackles, has not been a, a friendly place for the Hayesville Yellow Jackets, and they run against our defensive line, and that's a pretty tough bunch of cookies up there. This time, uh, Tyler Cook and Peyton Parker combining on the tackle. But you're right, Steve. I remember going over to Morristown, and and uh, uh, Coach Rod White was the head coach, and they did agree when it got to that point. We had a couple of guys get hurt, and the heat and their numbers, we just let the clock roll, and I think that was the right call. Third down and about five for it was, Hayesville. It was one of those games we could not – we could not control. Toss out to the left side. Oh, Coming got up, there was Josue Otero with the initial contact, and Josue playing defense here. Wow. And he's tough on defense, he's too. He's tough everywhere. <laughs> and I tell you, and again. Uh, uh, 150 pounds of dynamite right yeah, there. Yeah, 5'6", 150. And as you mentioned, dynamite comes in small packages. Or as they say, uh, diamonds are a girl's best friend, and they come in small packages. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy, I'm going to leave that alone. Or I'm gonna I get, would believe I would, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in trouble here. <laughs> but diamonds cost a lot of money. Oh, tell me about it. Whoever came up with that rule, three-month salary or two-month salary or whatever that is. I think Big- J.C. Ball did that. <laughs> Hayesville punting to the right side, no return. At the 16-yard line is where our Maroon Devils will take over first and 10 at the at uh, the 421 mark of the second quarter. Yeah, that sounds like. Now, I've always heard it was uh, a uh, – a marketing firm led by ladies because they wanted a nice engagement ring. Speaking so. of J.C. Ball, we need to pray for J.C. His health's not very good right now. He's having a hard time, and I feel for you, J.C. I'm praying for you, and I wish you the very best. Absolutely. And I know he's a big Maroon Devil fan, too. Yes, he is. He he loves Swain County High School and Swain County. He's a fine Christian man. Yep. 
He, he, and he's a fun guy. Got a timeout on the field, so we have a break in the action here from Hayesville. With a timeout there, we'll be right back. Fans, welcome back. Don't forget now, you can always tune in on the Maroon Devils Network, or you can catch us on YouTube. And that Maroon Devils Network is under construction. More on that in a later broadcast. But you can catch us on YouTube as well as right here on cable television and radio. This time it's going to be, uh, I was trying to see over there, Steve. Looked like Josue Otero around that left side. It was number 43, Josue Otero for a short game. And he carries around and, uh, and he gets the job done. But uh, well, it's still breezy out there. It's a very windy night. We're getting the first uh, Number taste three of fall weather. Number three quarterback, Matt Manley is the quarterback yep. for Swain so County. We are seeing some new twists on offense. Interesting. Manley, the junior, coming out to run the show, and he runs it himself around the left side. Kind of runs into his own man, but it's going to be tackled at the 25-yard line. So close to a first down, but Steve, depending on where they spot it, is it close enough? Looks like. Maybe a tad short. I can't tell, but I think maybe. it is a little bit short, half a yard maybe, <laughs> maybe a full yard. Third and one. So as we mentioned, a lot of new folks in the ball game. Just under four minutes to play here on the first half from Hayesville. I'll tell you, one of the prettiest counties in Western North Carolina. They're going to measure it. They're going to measure it. Yep, I think we're short, but it's better to find out. But you know, there is some pretty country over here in Clay County, over here around the lake. That guy move. We could see that. And you know, officials are not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talking about officials, I was talking to Carl Junaluska. He's one of the officials down there, and I uh, didn't realize it, but this is his twenty-second year. Good grief! And uh, he, he's a good fella. He's a good referee. Yep. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's them. That's him holding the chain right there, the, or the stick. Am I that old? <laughs> Have mercy. Hey, what can we say? <laughs> it's been a fun ride, I'm telling you. <laughs> but uh, I knew Carl when he was just uh, basically a kid, but he's been calling sports now as an official for 22 years. And again, really a good guy. That's amazing. Time flies. We were just, we've just been having too much fun, Steve. Time flies. You know? Swain didn't make it third and half a yard. I thought it was short, but I'm usually wrong on that stuff. Hand off straight ahead. Got a new man in the backfield for his first carry. It's going to be Garrett Lane, who has played a lot this year, of course. But he carries for his first time tonight, and that's a first down. Good second effort that time of Garrett Lane. He was stopped initially, but he kept on his his feet kept moving and his legs, and he was able to struggle for a first down for Swain County. You know, Garrett Steve, Lane. We have a lot of depth at running back. We have several guys who can come in there on Friday night and play. Very talented, every one of them. Garrett Lane is is exceptional athlete. Exceptional running back. He was a star on JV's. Quite a tandem between him and Josue Otero. Yeah, Josue standing right beside Matt Manley now. Matt in the shotgun. He's got trips over here on the right side, and he turns, and he's going to run the option to the left side, carries himself, and he's up close to another first down. Oh, there's a flag. I think we had a late hit over there, and that's a bad place to do that right in front of your opponent's bench. Boy, it was right in front of him. Yep, a little bit late. I'm afraid is what that flag is going to be. And, and uh, everybody gets up okay, though. That's a good thing, Steve. I don't think we've seen an injury so far tonight. That's the same big old referee we've had for the last three or four games, isn't it? <laughs> I started to say, I hope not. <laughs> I believe it is. <laughs> it's he has not same. been our friend. In the other, but he's been nice tonight. Yep. I tell you, he drove us crazy at Franklin that Friday night. He did. But I think you're right. Uh, I think you got something there. So, yeah. That penalty's going. marched off against Swain County. It looked like about a 30-yarder. <laughs> he just kept going and going and going and going. Let's see what the call is. It's going to be personal foul against Swain. Wow. Put uh, back on the, what, the 26-yard line? Yeah, I'm surprised at that. But uh, I thought it was a late hit out of bounds. But, but again, I was wrong on that call. So, it's going to be against our Maroon Devils. First down and a long way to go. Manley gets the snap. Turns and hands off to... Uh, Hosway, who carries for about three, out was, to the 29. That ball was snapped directly to Hosway. He was lined yeah. up beside of Matt Manley in a shotgun, and they snapped it directly to Hosway. Uh-oh, here's another penalty flag. Somebody said something. That one came out very, very late 
as the Maroon Devils were walking back to the huddle, and the official said something back. And so it's going to be unsportsmanlike against our Maroon Devils, and I guarantee you Sam Patillo is not going to put up with that. No, that cannot happen. That's uncalled for, absolutely uncalled for. Yep. You don't, you don't, uh, if you're going to say something, be sure the official can't hear you. <laughs> be a little more discreet. Yep. So that's two tough penalties in a row, a personal foul, and now an unsportsmanlike. And, and uh, yeah, Coach Patillo is not going to be happy with that. Better yet, just change your vocabulary. If you've got something vulgar in it, take it out. That's it. That's it. It's not needed. You can speak and talk all you want to and make something nice out of <laughs> something nasty. That's right. Or either that or just keep your mouth shut. There you go. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> I tell you. Uh, oh, boy. But I know it's an emotional game. It's a physical game. It's a violent game. And, and, and emotions sometimes get the best of you. Yeah, they do sometimes. And, uh. And I know it's uh, it's easy to uh, talk about being cool up here in the booth, but when you're down there in the heat of battle, sometimes your emotion gets the best of you. But but it but it should. That's a 13 yard line, Swain County. Josue Otero gets the toss, brings it back out to the 24. And this is the biggest hole we've tried to fight out of here, Steve. This uh, these penalties have really killed us on this drive. On this drive they have, but Frank, I mean, Hazel has yet to stop us on any possession we've had tonight, so we'll see what happens here. Yep. Now uh, this is going to be their best time to force a punt. We've got third down and about 19 with a minute 47 to play in the first half. Big third down play, third and 19. Swing County on top of Hazel, 41-0. to zero. And now it's going to be uh, Matt Manley. He's going to be... He's going to be under center this time. Looks out. Checks out the defense. Receivers left and right. Looks like he might be calling timeout. He was about to run out of time, and then the play clock was down to zero. So he noticed it quickly and called timeout. So good heads up by Matt Manley. Fans, stay tuned. We'll be back with more football after this timeout. Fans, welcome back. Third and long. Toss left side, and we're going to be knocked out of bounds. Not near enough for the first down. It's going to be uh, Garrett Lane, but he had nowhere to go. And, Steve, for the first time tonight, we're going to have to punt the ball to the Yellow Jackets with 118 to play before halftime. Looks down. Looks like it. Fourth down and long for Swing County. So now let's see what we can do here as uh, Evan Sneed. Uh, one thing about it, his leg is warm. He's been out there kicking a lot tonight. But He's done a lot of punt. kicking. He's done a lot of kicking. <laughs> done a lot of kicking. But not punting. That's right. And there's... Fourth down and long. Uh Uh-oh. Snap goes way over his head. Evan Sneed is going to be punting it literally out of the end zone. He does punt it out. So a good play by Evan. And the ball is loose. It's picked up by Garrett Lane out of the 28-yard line. And I believe that's where Hayesville will get it first down and 10. But Evan Sneed will will get it. Will Swain get it? No, he didn't get first down, did he? Nope. It's going to be Hayesville's ball. But Evan Sneed, a good job just avoiding a potential touchback, or even worse, it could have been a Hayesville touchdown in the end zone. That snap was way over his head. Oh, boy. It had to be 10 feet tall and on a ladder <laughs> <laughs> to get that one. That one was a little high. <laughs> Just a little bit high and outside. Huh? <laughs> yeah, high and outside. <laughs> and Evan's six feet tall, but he couldn't jump that high. Yeah, it's just, what is it, uh, Euchre says in the movie Major League, just a bit outside. (laughs) That's a a great movie. (laughs) It is a funny movie. (laughs) We're talking about that. If you're an Atlanta Braves fan, you've got to be just sick this week after they lost (laughs) in in that game against the Phillies the other night and didn't make it to the playoffs. That was a heartbreaker for the Braves. Oh, Bless their heart. I'm not a huge Braves fan, but I stayed up and watched it. It was late, but... uh, it just didn't work out. That was an exciting few minutes right there between that game and the American League game. Yeah, the and Red Sox. And, and then, of course, St. Louis won. They did their part. Both American League games. Oh, wow. So it is going to be our ball. Swain's ball. Wow, interesting. He fumbled the punt. After he had the possession of the ball, the Hazel punt returner fumbled the ball, and Garrett Lane recovered it. He's now in the backfield with Matt Manley at quarterback. Well, I know one thing. Uh, Coach uh, Gary Miller not happy with the situation as he's talking it over with the officials. And, Ball and, spotted uh, on, what, the 25-yard line, 24-yard yeah, line? Yeah, he's trying to 
make sure he understands. So uh, I'm kind of surprised, to be honest, that uh, this is the call, but apparently yeah, me too. that's what's going to happen. With a minute 15 to play, first half is almost over here in Hayesville. And the officials still uh, providing an explanation. I will say this, it's rare that they change their mind. It's extremely rare, but it has happened. It has happened. Yep, you're right. I saw Coach Boyce Dietz one night at Andrews talk to the officials, and uh, whatever he told them made them change their mind because they changed the play. He didn't get red-faced or nothing, did he? Oh, boy. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> oh, gosh. You could light a cigarette off his cheeks. Yeah, I remember that call well because that's one of the few times I've ever seen an official change a call after talking to a coach. But apparently Coach Dietz won the argument, made his point, and the official made the made the change. And, hey, officials make mistakes too. They're human like the rest of us. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and unfortunately, high school officials, now they're going to be talking it over with Sam Patilla and telling him what's going on. And, and uh but I think it's supposed to be Hayesville's ball. Uh, and, again, I'm wrong more than anybody I know. We'll wait and see, huh? But uh, I think so. the referee's pretty confused as well. <laughs> so, uh, folks. I think, I think he signaled Hayesville ball. Though. It is confusing here at Hayesville High School tonight. But the way I saw it, we punted out of the end zone. We did not advance it far enough for the first down. I, I honestly did not see a fumble. But, but Garrett Lane came out of there with the football in his arms. He did. Uh, but now, let's see what's going on now. Well, the officials, now they're saying it is Hayesville's ball, which I kind of thought that's the way it was supposed to be. At the 23-yard line of Swing County, first yeah. and 10 Hayesville. Because, again, I never saw a fumble. We punted out of the end zone. We didn't. Get the ball far enough up the field for a first down. So, well, anyway, they're still talking, and now they're going to call a timeout, and the teams go to the sideline. Fans, stay with us. We'll take a timeout, and we'll be right back. Fans, welcome back. We've got it all straightened out, and it's Hayesville's football, and they try to run to the left side, but there's a guy wearing number 34, Bradley Green, who puts the stop on the Yellow Jacket offense here, Steve. Bradley Green. Again, we're seeing some new uh, jerseys on defense right now. We saw some on offense, too. Bring up second down and still about 10 to go for Hayesville. Now with 107 to play, uh, both teams are uh, going to call it. We're going to call a timeout here, and both teams head to the sideline to talk it over, and we'll keep it right here. We have a minute, seven left to play. Well, think about it. We've had plenty of uh, timeouts here in the first half. Yes, we have. Once it was explained to me during the timeout in a, minute, a minute ago about that play, how Swain punted the ball from the end zone, which was way back behind the line of scrimmage, and he kicked it off the side of his foot, and the Frank, the Hazel player caught the ball, but it had not passed the line of scrimmage. Therefore, there was no change of possession. Gotcha. We didn't get first down yardage. And uh, even though Swing County did come up with football, there was no change of possession. So it remains Hayesville's football. He said it, uh, that rule keeps you from, if a punt is going to be blocked, you can't kick it right into the blocker and then recover the ball. Second down now, Hayesville. Back at quarterback is going to be Zach Wall. Intercepted. And it's going to be picked off again, bringing it back out across the 25-yard line with a penalty flag down. It's going to be Blake Wright, number 23 on the interception. And I think... Couldn't tell. No, that's not a penalty flag. That's just their ball marker, a little spotter thing. And and so there is no flag. It's Maroon Devil football now with 58 seconds to play before halftime. Number 23, Mr. Blake Wright came up with that big interception right there. Swing County already on top of Hayesville, 41-0 in the second quarter. And, Steve, that was uh, Hayesville's best chance to put points on the board here in the first half as they had the football down inside the uh, 35-yard line. But... Again, the turnover really, really hurts the Yellow Jackets. Now as Manley is going to be in the quarterback spot again. Hosway and Austin Schuler in the backfield. Got the starting backs right behind him. And he's going to turn and hand off to Hosway Otero. 
Hosway into Still the running. secondary. Still Look running. Out. out near midfield as Hosway knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line of Hayesville with 50 seconds to play. Good tackle down there by 27. Jarkees Lloyd, a senior on the Yellow Jacket secondary. Hosway, a good open field run that time. Up he's, over midfield. He's a tough guy when he gets into the secondary. Uh, your best bet is just what Lloyd did. Hand him against the sideline and knock him out of bounds. Yeah, that's what he did to him. Because, uh, boy, he's tough to bring down when he gets out in the open field. He's so shifty and quick. Receivers left and right this time. Otero and Schuler in the backfield behind Matt Manley coming on to play quarterback. Uh-oh, he dropped the snap. He picks it up, tosses it out to Austin Schuler. Out to the 40-yard line. Runs Austin for a four-yard pickup before being tackled over there by Zach Wall. Short gain on the play of about four yards for Swain County. Second and six. May have time for one more play here before halftime, Steve. 30 seconds and counting. And again, we'd like to remind everybody, JV's this Thursday going to be playing at Murphy. Or if you're listening live on radio tonight, that'll be next Thursday at Murphy. Their final regular season game before the playoffs. And it's going to be Matt Manley carrying. And that's going to be the final play of the first half from Hayesville High School here in Clay County. Our score at halftime. Maroon Devils 41, Hayesville nothing. Stay tuned. More coming up in the second half. So keep it right here. Fans, welcome back. Fans, welcome back. We're ready to go here for the second half. It's a 41-0 Maroon Devil lead as now the Hayesville Yellow Jackets will kick it off to Swain County here. And, Steve, uh, uh, we get to return a kickoff, and we haven't we haven't done that a whole lot tonight. It's, no. Uh, just getting started in the second half, Swain County on top of Hayesville, 41-0. I think we're going to see a lot of new faces here in the second half of football as uh, uh, some familiar ones out there right now. Matt Manley is back to return. The opening kickoff here as we're ready to go. And the referee blows the whistle, and here we go. The kickoff coming off the foot of Matt Danielson, and it's going to be returned by the Maroon Devils. Back out across the 35 to about the 36, maybe 37-yard line. A lot of hard hitting out there. I think it was Cecil Shepard on the return for Swing County. Yeah, good job over there by... Uh, uh, number 30. Yep, number 30, 6'265 pound senior. They like to call him CJ. Yep. He's our uh, shortstop, if you will, on defense, or uh, if you want to use a football term, strong safety. He's, he's a good athlete, that. good ball player. Yeah, he is. His dad was also, and still uh, is, I'm sure. Yeah. So he plays. New quarterback, uh, Dakota field. Brown. So we've seen three quarterbacks tonight. This is the third one, and. Uh, Wow, he's a, he's a short kid. Number 15, Dakota Brown. When he squats down there behind center at 5'8", 150 pounds, I know he's only a sophomore, but uh, when he squats down the way he kind of, the way, his, uh, 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 the way he holds his body, he's, he's short. <laughs> he is Pastor Lloyd Brown's grandson. Yes. Tony Brown's son. And, Michelle. Yep. And uh, I had the pleasure of coaching Tony Brown in T-ball. And he you was did? Good, yes, indeed. And he was a good player back then. He and his brother, Buzzy, and Hugh, and all those boys. They were outstanding. They certainly were. Second down, and the handoff this time comes to another running back we've seen for the first time tonight. And that is Dylan Morgan, a sophomore, number seven with his first carry. Dylan Morgan. Pretty good effort by Dylan, number seven. Still got some starting linemen in. As a matter of fact, we see uh, Jacob Wildcat and Corbin Panther in there and a bunch of starting linemen, but looks like all the skill people are new. Coming out wide left, for example, is Cody Epps, number six. Up to the high right side, looks like uh, as they line him up here, Dakota Brown under center. Turns, hands off, almost ran into his own back there. and uh, Kind of a tough handoff, but a couple of yards still out to the 43-yard line. That was 23 uh... Yep, that's going to be Blake Wright. Blake Wright. I was trying to think of his name. Yeah, and I'll tell you, if it wasn't for this roster, there's no way I can memorize those guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, thank goodness for rosters. But now, on fourth down, we're going to have to punt. Evan Sneed is coming on to punt with 10 minutes to play in the third quarter. So, again, Evan has uh, his right leg is warm tonight. He's had plenty of action with extra points and kickoffs. And that's only his second punt tonight. 
Takes a uh, Maroon Devil bounce down inside the 25-yard line, and that's where the Hayesville Yellow Jackets will take over first and 10 with their triple option attack here with, again, still over nine minutes to play third quarter here, Steve. It'll be interesting to see if Hayesville tries to pass the ball. I mean, I think they have a snowball's chance of catching up, so will they try to pass it up or will they just simply try to run out the clock? Well, you know, in the triple option attack, there's obviously that's one of the uh, options. Normally, and I say normally, there's always an exception. Normally, trip, triple option teams don't throw the ball as well because they they rely on deception and running the football and and the angles and the timing. But but we'll see. This time the quarterback comes out, and he's going to pitch it at the last second out to the 20-yard line, and we connect down on defense. Good job down there by the defenders, Austin Curtis and company down there on the tackle. Austin Curtis pushed him out of bounds at the, at what, at the 30, 25-yard line. Right. Uh, just a gain of about a yard on the play, second down and nine. Stops the clock. One thing about it, though, Steve, uh, their quarterbacks are veterans, Zach Wall, number seven, and Brack Martin, who alternate. Both these guys are back from last year, so so they have experience at quarterback. One of them's a junior, the other one is a senior. Yes, indeed. So they've been around this uh, offense a lot. This time Martin hands off, and coming straight ahead, it's going to be, looks like, 17, Caleb Knuckles again. We've talked about him tonight, and I'm sure he's uh, familiar with this Swain High bunch he's running against, and he's probably been thinking about that all week. Little or no gain on the play. <laughs> Because Caleb knows how tough these guys are. Yeah, he does. He knows firsthand. And, uh, of course, the good thing is we've seen good sportsmanship out there tonight for both teams. And and that's that's the way to play. Play good, play hard, but uh, play fair. Around the left side, it's going to be the option again. This time the toss is in the backfield. It's picked up back there, but the back, Robert Lund, number 32, had nowhere to go, and he's in a world of trouble back there, Steve, as he's surrounded by maroon and white jerseys. He's brought down way back for a loss, but who was that? Looks like Robert Duplack was one of the guys, number 22. Yeah, it was Robert Duplack. But they had about five guys around him. He was all over that play, Robert Duplack was. He was hustled all the way through it. And one thing about it, too, Steve, with new guys in there, they're fresh. I mean, there's some fresh legs in there on defense, too. That's good. It's good to see these young men get out here and get a chance on Friday night. So now Hayesville on fourth down at about 12. are going to have to punt. High punt, but not real deep. It's going to hit at the 38-yard line. A very short punt there by Danielson, and it's going to be blown dead at the 43. We'll get it inside Yellow Jacket territory. First down and 10, and, Steve, I'm sure we'll see some more, some more faces coming out on offense. I'm sure we will. Yeah, Hazel yeah. really didn't try to throw the ball. They ran one outside and got out of bounds, but they mostly ran the ball, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. And normally, you know, when you're down, you come out throwing. But, again, most triple option attacks, Georgia, uh, Georgia Tech is one exception. They can throw it well. But a lot of triple option folks, uh, not, not real excellent passing teams. Don't get enough reps at that, do they? That's it. They, they practice that timing. Toss around the right side. The Maroon Devils running the option here to Blake Wright. Just a little toss out to the right side. Blake down inside the 40. Nice gain on the play of about, uh, about six, almost seven yards. Going to bring up second down. Number 23, Blake Wright on the carry for Swain County. Don't forget, fans, next week, finally, we're going to be uh, back home on a Friday night. I know last week we were at home, but that was Saturday. That was just kind of. That was kind of strange. Steve. Yeah, it was. Uh, high school football on Saturday <laughs> afternoon, that's just not common. It's just unnatural. It's unnatural. There you go. Second down, we'll call it about four to go for the Maroon Devils. And, again, a lot of new folks in on offense. Brown, the quarterback, seeing the blitz. Hands off left side. We run down inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. And, again, on the carry, it's going to be Dylan Morgan, a sophomore on the team. Number seven, Dylan Morgan. Good carry, good gain. Uh, Drew Burns checks out of the lineup. So, again, new faces coming in and out. Cody Epps, one of the new faces. Also in there, uh, number 47, uh, Lewis Saley. Now we have some new linemen coming in, Steve. Ryan Reichert, number 78. And, boy, he's a, he's a big boy, 6'4", 225, only a sophomore. He is a healthy man, isn't he? He is, lining up at left tackle, one of the new faces 
on offense here. We'll try to keep track of those. First down and 10. Here comes the blitz again. And we run straight Blake, up the gut. Like right, right up the middle. So good call. And, again, nothing fancy here, Steve. But, but again, I think, you know, when you've got your second team guys in, you want to stick with the basics. That's right. Don't confuse them. They're excited enough already. You don't want to confuse them. <laughs> That's right. They're uh, they're pumped up and ready to play. And and but hey, it's like any other sport. If you don't get the basics down, you can't do the other stuff. And that's this is the time to focus on the basics. With a lot of new faces in, get your formation right, get your plays right. Toss left side. It's going to be Morgan again out around the corner. Twenty five down to the twenty two yard line. Nice run down there before being brought down on the play by Josh Maddox for Hayesville. Gain of about six or seven yards on the play by Dylan Morgan. That'll move the chain, Steve. First down and ten. Maroon Devils here with five minutes to play in the uh, third quarter here from Hayesville. Clock stops momentarily while I reset the chains. 41 nothing lead here for the Maroon Devils. And, and that's why we're seeing a lot of new folks in the ball game. Over there now is going to be Cody Epps' right side. Joining him is Kyle Matthews, number 14, as they split out wide. And again, it's going to be Brown under center. Hands off to the right side. Down inside the 20-yard line to the 19-yard line. Blake Wright once again on the carry. A, little, a short gain on the play. Timmy but, Kelly on the tackle. He's a big kid for Hayesville, 6'5", 245-pound senior. He's a large lad over there on that defensive line. He's a load, isn't he? He is. But talking about home games, we're going to have two in a row. Coming up Friday, Cherokee, and then the following Friday, Andrews at home. Three of the next four at home, weren't they? That's right. Only road game after tonight is at Rosman, and that is a road game. It's a fur piece. It is. No good way to get there. Yep. Dakota Brown hands off, quick hand off, right up the gut, down inside the 10, still going down to the five-yard line. It's going to be Blake Wright. Good second effort. That's a good run by Blake Wright. That was. And that's, as you mentioned, Steve, earlier, got to keep those legs pumping and keep keep yeah. running. Yeah, that's right. Keep him knees churning, and he did exactly that. But you were talking about Rosman. Uh, down to the five. It's not the end of the world, but I think you can see it from there. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll be uh, there uh, the weekend of October 21st, that Friday night, to take on the Tigers. Therefore, so far south, it's almost in Clemson land down there. Boy, Hayesville almost jumping on that play. No penalty flag, though. And uh, They're not far from Pickens, South you're right. Carolina. You're right. There, uh, there may be a turnover here, Steve. There is a fumble. There's a loose ball. It is, yeah. And I think the Yellow Jackets might have come up with it. And, and it is going to be Hayesville's ball at the four-yard line, our second-team offense. Inside the red zone, coughing it up, and now it's going to be Yellow Jacket ball. Couldn't make out who it was fumbled that ball, but Hazel definitely came up with it. Right. Not sure if it was uh, in the handoff or if it was after the handoff, but uh, regardless, it's Hazel's ball with 3.08 to play in the third quarter. But you're right. Uh, Rosman is almost in South Carolina. Yeah, almost. It's pretty close. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. But they are down to another bunch, close to another bunch of Tigers, Clemson Tigers, who are having a really good football season. There's another loose another football. Fumble. This time Hayesville is on it in the end zone. In the end zone. And it's going to be a safety. Oh, wow. He brought it him is. down in the end zone. You're right. It's a safety. It is a safety. So uh, That's with, two points. With, and yeah, 245 to play. And Hazel will have to kick off to Swain from their own 20-yard line. So a strange situation, 43 nothing now. And boy, I tell you, I've got a feel here for the Yellow Jackets. It's, it's been a long night for them. Well, we really weren't actually trying to score that, that time. Oh, no, the ball just came loose, and, hey, you got to get after it when the ball's on the ground. That's right. You can't – you can't – you got to keep getting it. You can't go half halfway. you got to go all the way. If you're out there, you need to go all the way. That's right. Coaches don't like people who play half speed. That's right. You can't do it. You get hurt. That's how you get hurt. You said it. So Knock uh, on wood. And I don't want anybody to get hurt. But, uh, boy, last week, Steve, big win, 34 nothing non-conference win for the Bruin Devils over Pikeville, Kentucky. And, uh, boy, we had another 
Another big win last week. That was that was nice. Pikeville apparently has a pretty good team. They were like four and one when we played them. Yeah, they, they left were down ranked. four and two. They were ranked in the state of Kentucky. I think they were ranked number seven in the one uh, A category. I think in Kentucky. Talking about rankings, we'll take a look at some rankings here in just a minute. Short kick. Now the kick is going to be picked up by the Maroon Devils. Down Shepard. And, and Shepard, good return back to the 29-yard line. We'll have it right there, first and 10. And Steve talking about rankings. One poll has this number one of the state. That's the Max Preps. We're ranked number one. Hendersonville number two. Murphy number 20. Now in the Associated Press poll, which most people follow, I guess, Wallace Rose Hill is number one in the 1A class. Albemarle, two. Swain County, three. Hendersonville, number five. Mitchell ranked number six in the 1A poll. Hmm. I so, thought Mitchell was 2A. Uh, I guess not, huh? Nope. But now Polk County is. Polk County is ranked number eight in the 2A poll. They're a really good team. Uh, but Mitchell is coming on as well. Mitchell, five and one. And here we go back to live action as the Maroon Devils keep it on the ground here, Steve. And that's Garrett Lane on the carry. Garrett Lane right up the middle, a short gain on the play, maybe maybe two or three yards. But the clock is running. But it's good to see our Maroon Devils get a lot of uh, accolades and some recognition being ranked in the state rankings. Our score now is Swain 43, Hayesville nothing. That is a good thing. I love to see us. But that's just a beauty contest. Yes, it is. It all comes down. you got to win it on the field. That's right. It's for uh, fans like us to talk about. <laughs> yeah, and speculate. <laughs> That's right. And off again, right side with just Bull straight ahead. And it's going to be laying again on the carry, taking the handoff from Dakota Brown. And uh, some other awards handed out, Steve, by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Folks, we know, by the way, uh, one of them, the uh, Distinguished Service Award, Bobby Wilkins at Hendersonville. He's a principal over there. Also, I know you know this person, Cy Simmons at Smoky Mountain. Yep. And uh, Babe Howell. Uh, Cy Simmons and Babe Howell were recognized by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association as special people for their contributions to high school athletics. Cy Simmons is Jackson Simmons' son, who just recently signed with the North Carolina Tar Heels to play Division One basketball. Yep, Cy used to be the athletic director at uh, uh, Smoky Mountain. And, uh, of course, he and his, wa- his wife, Cindy, a uh, very good coach her own right. And, uh, but, again, congratulations to them for the recognition by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Boy, did we ever play a lot of games against Babe Howell. A lot of them. (laughs) He was a great coach. He was uh, a figure at Silver Webster High School, no doubt about it. Hand off again, Brown hands off, and it's going to be Lane again, scratching down to the 36-yard line. And uh, that could be the final play of the third quarter. Babe Howell coached at uh, Silver Webster when – it was a football school. Yes. And, you know, he also had a couple of pretty good baseball teams with the Streeter brothers played. He had some state championship <laughs> baseball teams. Yes, he did with uh, Jimmy and Steve. And Eric. And Eric. I tell you, Jimmy and Steve were in a class of their own. Some of the best I've ever seen. And that is going to be the final play of the third quarter. Clock running down. So after three, it's Swain 43, Hayesville nothing. Fans, stay tuned. We'll be back with more Maroon Devil football after this timeout. Welcome back. We're ready to go with the final quarter here from Hayesville High School. Gary Ayers along with Steve Moon on a Friday night. Back to throw Dakota Brown. His first pass is going to be caught and dropped at the 30-yard line. Oh, man, he dropped it. Hit him right in the hand, Steve, and that's a tough place to hit a receiver. But Cody Epps had it but just didn't hang on. Yeah, I think he tried to run with the ball before he <laughs> caught it. You got to do one at a time. But you're right, Steve. These guys are out there. They're excited and and uh, and they're they're fired up out there. Yeah, they they are. They really are. And by the way, we were talking about uh, during the break coming up Thursday, October 6th, is going to be the Swain High Hall of Fame induction, and some of those who will be inducted include, uh, of course, the late Dr. Harold Bacon for his contributions. Uh, former coach Oz Waters and Principal Oz Waters, who uh, is just a fine, fine person. And, of course, uh, Benji Schuler, a great receiver at Swain and later on at Tennessee. And now we're going to have a timeout on the field as we get the fourth quarter underway. We'll take a break. Fans, stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Fans, welcome back as the Maroon Devils are battling with Hayesville here tonight. It's a 43-0 Maroon Devil lead here, Steve. We're, we're kind of uh, kind of playing a lot of new folks here in the fourth quarter. A bunch of new faces, new fresh meat on the hoof out there, Swing County and Hayesville. So, uh, and we were just talking about uh, the Hall of Fame induction and Benji Schuler's dad, Joe Benny, sticking his head here in the press box. And, of course, Benji is going to be in the Hall of Fame next Thursday night. That's right. Well deserved. That's right. No question about it. Hayesville trying to still run that option. They toss out to the right side, trying to turn the corner, but running into a bunch of Maroon Devil jerseys is going to be Josh Maddox. And, uh, you know, when we were kind of talking during the break, too. Uh, for a lot of years, and it was true, of course, Benji was always referred to as Heath's little brother, and he is Heath's little brother or younger brother. But I think now he might be bigger than Heath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he is. He, he's a healthy young man. He's... Well, they're both big men. Yeah, they're they're not little they're not little guys. And uh, but I tell you what, they're both very deserving of being in Swain County's Athletic Hall of Fame. They're fine people. Took after their mom. <laughs> now that. Hand off left side. Hayesville on the ground out to the 45-yard line. And, and, again, I said that because uh, Joe Benny bought your supper tonight. Is that right? Yeah, Joe Benny bought my supper again tonight. He's done that several times on these out-of-town trips. I have yet to have to pay for my own supper. He's bought it every time except once when Jamie Fisher came through in the pinch. <laughs> 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 I, I tell you what, I'm gonna start riding with you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but you know, and really, you think back about it, there have been so many great athletes with that Schuler name come down through, like Austin Schuler here tonight. That's in the same bloodlines. It is fourth down now. Yellow Jackets run to the right side. Boy, they're really close to the first down at the 47 yard line. But our own double defense there to stuff it really close. They may have to measure. But uh, but I can remember. When uh, Joe Benny played a pretty mean game himself. Yeah, I saw him one time in Andrews, I think it was. He pulled a hamstring. You talk about crying and whining, getting off the darn football field. I thought he was going to die. I think, I think it was just a cramp he had. <laughs> well, I've, I've heard some stories. I've heard some stories from his high school coach, Carol Wright. See? He said he was pretty tough. Now, I wonder if he's talking about the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was pretty tough. you got to give credit where credit's due. He was pretty tough. That's right. That's right. Hayesville staying on the ground inside Maroon Devil territory, just past that big yellow jacket at midfield. And a bunch of Maroon Devils in on the tackle. One of those leading the way is Seth Simmons, a sophomore. But, uh, our, of course, I remember... <laughs> I remember when Joe Benny played the men's league softball and men's league basketball, and we even used to had there for a couple of years flag football we played up there. And I remember back in the good old days. Is that what that was, the good old days? That's what we call them. That's what we call them now. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. It was uh, it was a lot of fun playing. Uh, Ball on the uh -oh, ground. Another loose football, and we've had lots of turnovers here tonight. And now they're saying the ground, it hit the ground, so it's going to be Hayesville's ball, the official said. But uh, that's a good thing about Swain County High School, Steve, is that there's so much tradition passed down from the generation to the generation to the next generation, and and the excellence continues. That's great. That's the way it should be. It's a cyclical thing, and as long as we can keep good bloodlines in there, we'll be all right on and on and on. That's it. I mean, uh, some of these guys that are out there playing tonight, I remember when they're uh, – when their dads play. Here comes the quarterback running to the right side. Breaks a tackle out inside the 40, down inside the 35-yard line. It's going to be Brack Martin. Good carry there by the Yellow Jackets. And uh, that's going to be a Yellow Jacket first down with seven minutes to play in the ball game. And the Maroon Devils up 43 to nothing. Brack Martin won the race to the outside. He turned the corner before the Swain defender could get there. And they had a good gain on that play. He did. Down about the 25-yard line. But, Third, uh, 35-yard line. But, again, Oz Waters is going to be inducted, a uh, uh, great basketball coach and uh, coach track and was principal at the middle school, uh, uh, just a really, really good person. And, of course, uh, everybody remember Dr. Harold Bacon, who uh, probably uh, half the people in Swain County, especially our age, probably everybody in Swain County, went to Dr. Bacon at one time or another. 
No, I always went to Dr. Mitchell. Yeah. Well, I've been to both. Uh, so, And Dr. Nordling was the other guy. <laughs> I think we had three doctors back when we were kids. Yeah. Dr. Nordling came along a little bit later. He, he didn't get here a lot of, in my teenage years. Uh-huh. But Dr. Mitchell delivered me at home at the house. Yep. Well, he delivered me too, but I think I, I got lucky. I made it. My mom made it to the hospital. Quarterback in trouble. He takes off and runs for Hayesville, and he's going to be tackled at the 33-yard line. Again, I was a, a lot of folks around the ball here. I was a really pretty baby because people used to come over and bar me on Sunday to take me to church with them. Uh, there's another lady that had a baby about the same age as, uh, as me, and she would uh, give my money, a, mama a bribe to, to take me to church with her, say that was her pay, baby because I was so pretty. <laughs> hey, that's a good story. Yeah, <laughs> we need to ask your buddy if that's true. Of course, you, you came along before I did, so I don't know if you were a pretty baby or not, but I'll have to take your word for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Third down. Yellow Jackets got a man in motion here on the triple option. Back to throw. Throwing it down the left side. Got a man open, and he's got it down at the seven-yard line. That's going to be Matt Danielson, a junior wide receiver. Caught it. It's first down and goal. Hayesville with 544 to play. Yellow Jackets knocking on the door at the six-yard line. Trying to break the ice. They trail Swain by 43 to nothing, and time is running out. I think that was Cody Rich on the defense for Swain County. So let's see if the Maroon Devils can keep Hayesville off the scoreboard or if the Yellow Jackets are going to... First and goal from the six. This time, four wide receivers on the set for Hayesville. And again, the quarterback in the shotgun is going to be Brack Martin. He's going to run straight up the middle, and yeah. Martin is down to about the two, maybe the three-yard line where it'll be second down and goal. 520 to play here on the ball game. 43 nothing Maroon Devils here. And some big beef coming in. To anchor the middle there, Steve. I mean, some some big beef. Big guys, 79. Yeah, one of those. And he's a new man on the team, Elias Husky. I think he just came on the team this week. Yeah. 79. He's, matter of fact, we had to write him in on the roster because he was not on the regular roster. Elias Husky, and he's a large fella. That little lady on that commercial says, where's the beef? Right there it is. That is. Mr. Husky is a big boy. And this time, Martin tries to run wide to the right side. He gets in the end zone, and the Yellow Jackets get on the board with 4.43 to go. It's now 43 for Swain and 6 for Hayesville. So got to make these guys feel a little better. Yeah, Hayesville finally breaks the ice with time running out in the fourth quarter. 43-6, to six, pending the PAT. But seriously, we hope folks will show up for the uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It's always, you know, it's always an honor because... These are the people who have really brought a lot of excellence to Swain High Athletics. They really have. Uh, I mean, it's, you can look back on it one of these days and say, I actually got to attend the uh, ceremony for putting Benji Schuler in the Hall of Fame. One after touchdown, it's going to be no good. So with 4.43 to go, we're going to break with our score. Swain 43, Hayesville 6. We'll be right back. Fans, welcome back as the Maroon Devils will bring it back after the Hayesville Yellow Jacket kickoff. Nice return for Cody Rich out across the 37-yard line. So we're going to get it back one more time here, Steve, with just over four minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Need to keep it on the ground, maybe grind out a first down or two and run this clock all the way out. One thing we're looking forward to, or well, we may or may not be looking forward to, you know, this year, it's a realignment year. The folks are starting to work on that with the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. They're saying now in the 1A that uh, the numbers are going to probably end at about 726 students for 1A, and the 2A class would go up to about 1,037. So trying to figure out how many we have at Swain County High School to see if we'll still be 1A. 619. So then we're in good shape for staying 1A. Uh, so... Uh, that's what they're saying right now in the, uh, uh, for example, 3A class would go up to about uh, 1,400. Blake right on the carry around the left side. So uh, there is some realignment going on, and, and they're going to keep it at four classes. There was talk about maybe going to five classes, but they're going to keep it in the same four classes. So uh, so uh, not a whole lot of change. So I guess we'll have still little 1A and big 1A when we go to football playoffs. Reason I, reason I know it was 619 when we played Gatlinburg 
their enrollment also was exactly the same as ours, yeah. 619. Got a timeout on the field. Hayesville calls time with 4.09 to play here. Our score, Swain 43, Hayesville 6. We'll be back after this timeout. Hands welcome back now. First down and 10. Maroon Devils on offense. Dakota Brown running the show, and he's going to hand off as we go straight ahead. The Yellow Jackets stop us at the 48-yard line. There's uh, number 39, Garrett Lane on the carry. Steve under four minutes and counting now before this one is put in the ledger books, and we can call it a win. A couple yards that time for Garrett Lane. Give him three. Second and seven. Hey, we want to thank uh, Catherine and also J.B. Jacobs back at the studio at WBHN for running the show back there tonight. Hey, thanks a lot, J.B. We really appreciate you. That's that's Mr. Jacobs. That's right, Mr. <laughs> Jacobs. Heavy on the mister. Heavy on the mister. Toss left side. This time it's going to be Bradley Green on the carry, and he has a first down at the Yellow Jacket 38-yard line, out of bounds with 318 to play. But, uh, hey, J.B., he's been up there most of the day and now half the night. He, it's getting past his bedtime here. <laughs> yeah. It's past my bedtime, and <laughs> he's got a year or two on me. He's a fine man, J.B. Jacobs. Yes, he is. He's a treasure. He is uh, one of a kind. And, and uh, he went to school, went to high school with my dad. No kidding. So he certainly did. Swain County High School? That's right. Those Maroon Devils run deep. First down. Dakota Brown tosses right side. It's going to be Dylan Morgan again. Cuts back inside down to the 30-yard line. And that's going to bring up a second down and a couple to go with under three minutes to play now. Excellent cutback that time by Dylan Morgan, number seven. Bring up second down and about two for Swain County. But uh, Maroon Devils in Hayesville. Clock's still running. Clock is still running. A couple of other... Tidbits to pass along. We'll get to those in just a minute now with just over two minutes to play. Maroon Devils now needing a couple of yards at the 30 for a first down. Inside Hayesville territory. Handoff left side. We get the first down down to the 26-yard line. It's going to be Garrett Lane. But Steve coming up tonight to Josh Brooks. We know him over at Franklin High School. If they win tonight, and I think they will as they play Smoky Mountain, he will actually uh, pass former Franklin coach Fred Goldsmith for the most wins at uh, Franklin High School history, as Coach Career. Smith had 47, and uh, Coach Brooks is going to be right there with him. And that's our all-time record? Yes, all-time winning as coach at Franklin High School. And it's going to be interesting for Josh because he played at Smoky Mountain, and that's who they're playing tonight. Toss to Garrett Lane, left side, forced out of bounds at about the 17, 18-yard line. Good hustle by Garrett Lane. He's trying to get turn that corner, but didn't quite make it, but still got a good gain on the play. Yeah. Well, I tell you, there's no love lost between Franklin and Smoky Mountain either. No. <laughs> They've had some real good ball games in the past. And they call it the Battle of Cowie Mountain. Oh, yeah? Yep, that's the big, uh, that's what they call it. The, that's where the county line's at. Yep, Cowie Macon Mountain and Jackson County. And 155 they, uh, and counting. Well, they, like I say, they don't like each other a whole lot. But anyway. We're looking at second down. We need about three. Dakota Brown tosses right side. Here we go. And this time, Hayesville defends it very well as we toss over there to Blake Wright. He and kind of slipped the feet come up under him, and he slipped down. But uh, Hazel was all over top of him. Yep, third down now. We still need about, about three to go, minute 28 to play. But, Steve, next week we're going to be at home. The Braves of Cherokee will be at Swain County Memorial Stadium. We hope to send them back up the road with a loss. Yeah, we hope to, we plan on doing that. That oh. is that is definitely in our plans. You better believe it. Hand off left side this time. And again on the carry is going to be Bradley Green. One minute and counting now before the Maroon Devils can take this one to the house and get ready for next week. Again, two games in a row at home. Cherokee and then Andrews. Andrews a better team this year, but Hey, they're just now getting to the better teams in the conference, too. Yeah. Andrews might be a little better, but we are, too. Yes, we are. I, I uh, see good things ahead for this Maroon Devil football team. I do, too. Dakota Brown under center again. Split backs right behind him. Four-man front for Hayesville. And this time it's going to be uh, the handoff straight ahead. Down to the about the 10-yard line. It's going to be a first down. And again on the carry. And Morgan, wasn't it? Yep, Morgan again. And we have time for one more play, and then we'll 
Put the wraps on it. Put it under the tree. First and ten from the ten. We hear our band over there playing the Hey Hey Goodbye song. And yeah, the fat lady warmed up a long time ago. Yeah, she was warming up right after the start of the <laughs> first quarter. Yep. Dakota Brown under center. And this should be the final play of the ball game. And he hits a knee, and that's a classy thing to do. And yeah, this it was. One is over. Yeah, it was. 43-6, to six, our final score. Maroon Devils never really challenged here tonight, Steve Moon. Turnovers really killing the Hayesville Yellow Jackets along with a very solid defensive effort by this Maroon Devil football team. They were just, Hayesville was just definitely outclassed here tonight. I mean, Swain County had too much firepower, too much manpower, and they dominated this football game from the get-go. Our final score is Swain County 43, Hayesville 6. Yes, indeed. Now, the question is, is, uh, is Joe Benny going to take you out for a post-game snack? I mean, you got supper. Do you get a post-game snack on the I way? doubt it. I just want to hope he takes me home. Ice cream. Oh, goody, ice cream. Hey. Don't tell my wife I'm eating ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fans, that's going to wrap it up on this week's broadcast. Thanks for listening and watching in. As we'll say, good night from Hayesville, North Carolina. So long, everybody.